It's the Cracker Rugby Podcast. It's the second last game in the next Com Stadium. But Connacht are going to be taking on Zebra. Every result has gone against Connacht so far this weekend. Daniel, so we're expecting Connacht to go out and have a good game. Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> yes, Daniel. <Okay. laughs> yeah, definitely like, you know, um, what, four weeks in the in the league where everything was going our way. Truly it works the other way, right? You know? That's what I that's what I reckon. Because it's perfect. Genie, Mac, this is I can't believe this is my third game in a row. I'm in the sunshine wearing a t-shirt, watching a Connacht game. It's uh, it's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, it's lovely. It's, it's nice to be in the in the Dexcom and uh, being very very warm. I'm I'm really really excited to see Jennings and uh, Divine getting starts. Um, Divine bounced onto the field. Oh my God! You've never seen a guy just he absolutely bounced onto the field. I think he was the second player on there, and he just couldn't wait to get out there. And I'm hoping that enthusiasm comes across in the game and that he. Uh, he shows what he's capable of. Definitely, and uh, the 24th man this week was uh, is Hugh Gavin. Yeah. And it, it, it took me 10 minutes to find him. Yeah, oh yeah. my God, he's a unit. So it'd be great to see him in the future. He can't be that far away if he's coming in at 24th man. But uh, exactly. as, as for today, like I'm really looking forward to seeing how Divine controls the game from the start. Yeah. Did a very good job last week. I know we lost, but he had an impressive cameo off the bench. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see how that goes. Well, I'm assuming a bonus point win is what you're expecting. It's what we need. It, yeah. You know, um, I know we, 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 we sometimes say it's like, look, just, just get the win, but we really need the bonus point win just with how the results have gone. Um, the one other change that, that did interest me actually is uh, Keane Prendergast been finally given a rest. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing how that back row goes. Uh, yeah, Sean O'Brien has looked exciting when he's been able to play this year. Let's hope he uh, has a good game and doesn't get hurt. Yes. OK, we'll uh, talk again on 20 minutes. 22 minutes gone. Zebra lead, 8 points to 7. Connacht are holding on to the ball uh, going forward, but when we get to the, the very last stage, seem to be making a little bit of a mistake. Apart from Matty Devine scoring a, a, a great try on his first start. He did, he did. A bit of a mistake from Shane Jennings to let Zebra in for their try, but um, it's not looking good for the win, and it certainly isn't looking good for a bonus point, but we'll... Uh, I, well, the crowd are well in this match. Ju- uh, just at the moment, I disagree. I think Connacht are definitely going forward. Everything's looking right. Going again. He's gone. Yes! I think... <laughs> I think we've a new crowd favourite here. Mind to score the hat trick for Gunners. What a game! We'll talk again at halftime. Okay, halftime score. Connacht leads 21-11, and the star of the show is Matthew Devine. He scored two fabulous tries. Um, the first one, I, I, I don't think the ref had, uh, she'd barely blown the whistle and he was already over the try line. And the second one, he, at the right time, he's come up and given Connacht a serious boost by, by scoring just just outside, uh, from just from the, about the 10 metre. But it was, a, it was a fabulous score to get through the first two defenders as if they weren't there. Yeah, yeah, we caught that on, on record. I hope the sound doesn't break the uh, recorder there because we were recording on 20 minutes, or just after 20 minutes when he scored that try. And then we got Niall Murray getting his uh, seventh try for Connacht. He likes playing against the Italians. That's five against those lads. Yeah, he's got, he, he, he loves to pop up at the right time. It was a great crossfield from JJ. Um, but, like, Connacht would be annoyed with that half. Yeah. They've, they've fairly dominated possession and contact. And they're own, like, it's only 21-11. I kind well, of what's feel... The, you've got the stats. What are the 22 entries? They're not looking great. Well, it's a 50% for Connacht. We've been in there 22 six times and they come away three. They've been in five times and come away, uh, scored three times. But they have got one drop goal. But the thing would be is that I, I feel like the game, while Connacht have dominated and so they, they haven't come away with enough scores, they should yeah. have, They should be ahead by more. And they certainly shouldn't be 
letting the Italians in so easily. Yeah, yeah, because like, uh, I don't know what the, we don't have the stats here for possession and territory, but we've been watching a lot of the game in the Connacht half. Yeah, I feel like uh, Connacht are just not making enough of their chances. Um, we're certainly not, there's been a couple of, kick, uh, p couple of penalties that we haven't been able to get into the 22. Like our, our entries should be higher. Yes. Yes, considering where we've had penalties and they should have landed in 22. And of course, the other thing is that when they went down to 14 men, we seem to change from playing an open game to playing a very tight game. So I, I will be asking that if I get the chance afterwards. And if I don't, I'll certainly be getting the chance during the week to find out why we seem to tighten up when the opposition's going down to 14 players. Anyway, we'll talk again on 60 minutes and hopefully we'll have a bonus point um, and a few more points on the board because we do look as though we should have and we definitely need it. Good reception there for Finley Bealham as a big crowd favourite. Connacht are now, we're talking what, 58 minutes going on 59, Connacht lead 33 11, and just need to score again and keep scoring to get that points difference going. Yeah, we're just going to improve the, the points difference. Um, we, we, we started off at minus points before this game. Just This is a perfect opportunity to improve that now. Um, yeah, especially with the Ospreys winning down in South Africa. It's a phenomenal result down against the Stormers, which yeah. means that the best we can do is probably be ninth this weekend, assuming Edinburgh beat, beat the Scarlets. Um, but it certainly shows that our game against the Stormers in as a more likely win than we thought. Well, let's not count our chickens. The scrum is in trouble. We've made a lot of change in the front row and they've just they've just Mullet made a big big play in there so maybe this isn't quite as over as we thought it was. But anyway, let's talk again at full time. Okay Danny, final score, Connacht fifty four, Zebra sixteen. We got the points, we got the win. We also a very angry Connacht, there was a lot of just kerfuffles there near the end which made it a little bit interesting. You know, there were as you you, you saw a few things happening out there. Yeah, there was a lot of late hits. Um, they, they eventually got a yellow card for a late hit on McElroy, which is just like McElroy is running a hard line and your man hits him blind. He's never getting the ball. It's clear as day. Yeah. Um, so you, like, it, it just added a bit extra. Zebra started to get annoyed because they were being beaten. And you know, like, look, these are, these are professional rugby players. They're angry men. They're, they're starting to get a bit of a niggle. But it's nice to see kind of going after after them and like backing each other up. JJ gets pushed and Sam Elo just comes in and, and, like, and, and, and JJ looks it. as though he's hurt his hamstring. He's got a ice, big ice pack on his hamstring at the moment, so hopefully it's not too bad. Yeah, he did look like as as he as he was about two steps out from yeah. the try line. He does kind of hobble a little bit. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, but like um, certainly Niall Murray. I'm not sure I've ever seen Niall Murray look so angry. He was certainly going around getting himself stuck into a lot of fellas near the end. Yeah, well, well, 17 did actually go after Murray at, a, at a, a ruck maybe about 10 minutes before that. Right. And he was just trying to get, get loose and he was just going after Murray when Murray was getting annoyed. So, like, there, there was a lot of, there was a little bit of niggle. Not quite as uh, a match with Munster, but uh, it was good to see them sticking up for each other and going after it. It certainly was. Look, it's great for Connacht. It's great to get that win. They needed that for their points difference. Puts them back. In with a chance of getting into the top eight, but there's so many results going strange ways today. Connacht need to do it, and uh, big, big game next week against the Dragons, and they're going to have to go through the Dragons to get a result over there. Yeah, and you have to say it has to be five points again, um, just with the way other teams are doing against the, the Dragons this season. Yeah. Not somewhere where Connacht are always... Um, no, we struggle. We struggle over there. Invariably, we struggle. But that, let's leave that till next week. Here is the post-match press conference. Pete, the expected win, but a very good performance. Plenty of points scored. Eight, seven, seven, seven tries plus a, plus a penalty. Um, and a very good performance by Matthew Devine. So um, th there's a lot to pick out of that. Uh, and it sets you up then for next week. I suppose that's the only way you can, at this stage of the season. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think that there was lots to like about it. I think even just the, you know the first quarter of the game or so that was a bit stodgy. I think that wind we struggled to get out of our bottom third, and um, you know Zebra, you know threw everything at us. And, and I think the way the lads you know weathered that storm, dug it out, and started to assert themselves, I was really pleased with. And then on the back of that, I thought we played some terrific rugby. So um, they were very important in terms of the URC, very important in terms of our points difference as well. The, the messages we were sending down from the coaches box sort of 15, 20 minutes to go. It wasn't just about putting the foot down in terms of wanting to score tries, but it was so important that, you know, we didn't just keep leaking them at the other end and end up winning a sort of, you know, 40 to 30 contest. And, um, you know, on the whole, I thought we did a, did a good job of that in that last quarter. Um, and as you mentioned, Matthew Devine, I thought it was terrific for, for a first start. I think um, he had that perfect balance of facilitating the team in terms of allowing us to play fast and, and, and doing the basics really well but at the same time you know had his x-factor moments as well and um, you know we're really excited about about what's to come for him could we have seen him a bit earlier I have to ask because people you know people were kind of a bit awestruck by I mean look at Zebra so I, I understand that but he does seem to have a bit of presence about him. No, he does. He, he's not short of confidence, and I think he's got a really smart rugby brain, and, and he wants to assert himself in in the gameplay, whether that's something at training or whether that's the the match here. I think um, you know he'll be the first to say that that we've never doubted his X factor, and um, you know, but he's been working really hard on that consistency around some of the basics, and uh, you know, facilitating the team and learning about you know decision making and uh, you know linking in with the tens, the Jack and JJ, and the calls they're putting into him. So. Um, I thought he handled that really well this evening. I have to say that because he just sat down next to me. So. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, absolutely. He couldn't <laughs> say anything else. Good time in that. Um, also, looking at some of, the, I mean, John Porch is back after a, uh, after a while. Um, Shane Jennings at fifteen, maybe a little bit in and out. Uh, they did pepper him a bit, but going forward, uh, he still seems to be able to see the gaps that are there. He's looking for them all the time. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I said to Shane there out on the field, you know, there were a couple of mistakes early and it's very easy to go into your shell at that point and stop going up for the high balls or stop making decisions. But, you know, it was part of the reason, that even though we put um, put Porchy to full back, it, it was important to keep keep Shane on the field. We put him out to the wing and, um, you know, it's uh, it was important for him to be out there and weather that storm. And I, I think the way he carried, as you said, he's got that ability to beat that first defender. I think that was really important. So, um, you know, it's another great learning experience for him and, and time in the saddle. To have Porchy back is brilliant for us. You know, he's been a stalwart for us over many seasons. And, um, you know, as we've said, the back three stocks have been a little bit thin at times. So to have him back on the roster with, with a couple more to come over the next few weeks is, is really good timing. The way Joe Joyce was used tonight in open play, coming onto the ball, that seems, when you're watching, is a better use of him maybe than going from a standing start or just trying to drive the ball through. Was that a, a definitive plan this evening? Because he seemed to be loitering in space, looking for that uh, a movement at speed. Yeah, look, I think that's a really smart pickup. Um, it's a definite plan, but probably not isolated to, to Joycey in that sense in terms of his, his role. I think one of the things we've been working on as an attack over the last you know, few weeks has really been about that timing further wide, you know, further away from the ruck. I think um, you know, if you've got forwards running off nine, um, it's a little bit easier to get your timing off. You're the first pod off ten, but, but when you're sort of a couple of pods of players away um, and it's got to go through several pairs of hands before your moment, so that patience, that timing, you know, that's all part of us trying to get flow all the way across that, that attacking line. And um, as you mentioned, I thought Joyce did that really well today and the reward then is those dominant carries up against back or, or you know, defenders with, with softer shoulders in the midfield. So I thought he was excellent, but I think as a team we're, we're improving in that space as well. Some interesting results, um, some pretty crazy results really for what you, you, you would expect. So next week again now, how do you analyse this game and then line in the sand it and move on? It, it's, a, it's the second last game at, at this stadium in its current format. It's a big win. People have left here very excited, but it's really only part now of a of a of a setup of, of four more games left, three of which are away. Yeah, it is, and um, you know it's a, it's a tough four games. You know, I know the Dragons are, are down nearer the bottom of the log, but but Rodney Parade, as we all know, is a, a tough place to play your rugby, and um, you know they certainly don't back down there. So we've got four tough games coming up. I think it's it's probably the curse of the head coach. Everyone's celebrating the performance tonight, and you know you're already uh, already thinking away about what's to come and selection and game plan and and what can we learn from this. So you know it's fascinating. Uh, I think 
you know, I said to the boys down there in the change room, we need to celebrate the win. We need to acknowledge what was really good about the performance tonight. Um, but we also, once we've done that, we need to make sure we come in on Monday morning um, ready to, to apply ourselves in, in the preparation for Dragons. We've got a full week of preparation. We've not had a, a three-day training week for a little while with the travel and so forth. Um, and um, we can't afford to ease into the week. We, we've got to make the most of Monday. We've got to train well Tuesday. We've got to polish things Thursday and, and get on the plane ready to go. And, and what we can't do is is um, you know dwell on a really good performance this evening and, and find we're chasing our tails at the end of the week because Rodney Parade and the Dragons are pretty unforgiving if you're going with that mindset. So the review will be similar. You know, Acknowledge the good stuff. Let's see why it worked, um, but also look at how we might be able to better control momentum in that first 20 minutes uh, and look at what we need to do better away from home next week. Any injuries? Uh, JJ limped off. Uh, it's hard to tell. That was after he scored his try, so maybe he was just a bit tired. But uh, is, is there anybody else picked up any bangs? No, no, no huge concerns. I, I think hopefully JJ's was more of a cramp than a than a um, you know a muscle injury, and um, he was certainly determined to take the conversion uh, before he came off, which <laughs> is um, which is normally a good sign. That's not too bad. Uh, but as I said, we're, we're happy to play with 14 for, for the back end of the game and, um, and look after him a bit. But uh, look, other than that, I think it's a, a pretty clean bill of health and a couple of cramps at the end. But, but they're generally guys who haven't played much rugby for us, so, so we're happy there. And the fact that your what, what I can only assume was your twin brother was the medic tonight for Sebre Parma. Uh, were you aware of that? No, because he's, a, he's your double. At one stage, I thought, "Why is Pete down in the Benetton half of the thing on, on the yeah. touchline?" So, no, good-looking man then. By the oh, time. absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. I appreciate it. This rugby, Matthew, it's it's simple, isn't it? You just get out there and do your stuff and score two tries and have a very good sixty minutes and come off to a lot of applause and a man of the match. I mean, it's it's a good start. Uh, I promise they're all going to be like that. No, that was a uh, that um, that was a good one. But yeah, I was I was sore enough not coming off. It's for always physical. It's very physical. But um, yeah, no, I'm delighted with how it went. You seemed very confident from the start, and once Conor got on the front foot, you, you were instrumental in, in driving them on. Then and it 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 flowed very very well. But even though they they stuck at it. Um, yeah, like I have to give credit to JJ and Bundy, they're two great voices with loads of experience outside of me. And um, when you have a good team around you like that, and a lot of lads with a lot of experience like Finley getting his 200 cap today, um, it makes it far easier coming in. We're only, what, my third cap? Um, yeah, but it makes it way easier when you have those lads around you to kind of bring you through the game. And they kind of give you that confidence to go on and play your own game. And when I was going out, lads were all telling me, just don't overthink it, just go out and do what you do. And, and they were talking to you all the time where they are, are calling what was going on and yeah uh, because there was quite a lot of noise some nights you can actually hear that going on but you couldn't hear it tonight because with Connacht playing like that it gets the crowd going yeah that was um that was something we needed to do as well <clears throat> was to bounce back from last week and give us words something to cheer about because they're they're so good to us on the bad days um, and it's important we try and give them as, as many good days as we can so what's next then um, on to Newport ice ice now and then <laughs> On to Newport next week, straight away, turn around and get ready for them. Yeah, well, as Pete just said, you've got a full week to get, to, to get ready for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, well done, it's a great start. Thanks. And uh, congratulations. Thanks, William. Cheers. Matt, you've done 80 minutes now over the last two weeks. What has been the biggest difference from under 20 rugby? I know you've played international, but is, I mean, how do narrowed Italians compare to like young, fresh books that you've been playing against before? Um, I think it's, you know, I've already said it, the size, they're, they're big lads, um, and the physicality, I'll be, uh, I think I'll be sore tomorrow morning now, but um, that's probably the biggest difference, yeah, is the, the physicality of it. Is it true your dad sent messages down, he wants to get, get you off the field, he <laughs> wants to be the only divine with a hat trick? <laughs> <laughs> I nearly had one, Faz nicked it. I know, yes, yeah, <laughs> I know dad, dad came down to me after he's buzzing and the first thing he said to me was just he's really really proud of me and yeah all the family are delighted you look, you look like you're someone who just wants to pinch yourself and say oh did I really did I really do this I mean when you're going into that match did you envisage um, you would have two tries and a man match the ward first very first I mean I, could, I went into it thinking I was going to try but I couldn't uh, I don't think I could ever guarantee that it's going to go as well as that um, yeah no like I'm Delighted. This is everything I could have asked for on this night. Just 
from an individual perspective and from a team perspective, I thought we were great tonight. And we played some great rugby and we scored loads of tries, so it was brilliant. OK, that was the voice of a very happy Pete Wilkins and an even happier Matthew Devine, who was um, pretty divine tonight, wasn't he, Dave? Oh, yeah, I mean... At one stage, I genuinely thought it was Matthew Devine playing 14, Ital 14 15 Italians on his own. He, was, he, he got us up and running. He gave us the spark. He, is, he played with a swagger. Um, but he's, he, having now spoken to him uh, in person for the first time, he, he's, not, he's, not a, he's not arrogant. But he, when, when he goes off the pitch, on the pitch, he plays with an arrogance. He plays with, he plays with a joie de vivre that, we need, that every team needs. I mean, it is Zebra that has to be taken into account. And he could be trodden into the turf next week or in, in the future. But tonight was all about how you know, he lifted the team. They took a spark from him. And it, it was a... It was it was lovely to see a player just doing something different. I mean, most of the time we, at most teams, and look, this is not having a go in any of our other players, but they wouldn't have taken the tap penalty that close to the line. They would have gone for the corner and gone for them all over try. We probably would have scored that as well. But just to do those things, and like I said, it's 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 always nice when you see a scrum half taking running in from twenty yards, having stepped twice and done a, a hitch kick step as well to make, take out the the, the scrum half. It was it was just lovely. <laughs> it certainly was, and it's not just that, Lindley. His his skill set is is quite sublime as well. There was only very few passes went to deck, but my God, even if they did, the speed at which they were getting to the outside back seemed to give us a whole array of space out there. Yeah, I think actually his his pass improved yes. as the game went on. I thought it to start with he was actually taking a little bit of time, and I but. It, I'd say after about 20 minutes and he got himself into the game, I thought it completely changed and it, it really sped up and it improved completely and the passes were superb. Mm. Yeah, there was, and it was the sheer speed. Yeah. Like, the, you know, it was incredible to see how much space and how far fellas were standing away and yet the ball was getting to them at, at an unbelievable pace. Well, you couldn't really dream of a better debut, could you? No. I mean, you know, eight tries scored, you know, he scores two of them, man of the match. So, I mean, it's a dream start for him and long may it continue. Yeah, yeah, not quite his debut, but his first start. But I, see what, I know exactly what you mean, I know exactly what you mean. William, you happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, you give Zebra a little bit of respect. They don't deserve very much. They're not a very good side. And you beat them. You give them a proper kicking. Uh, I'm talking about kicking. There was a bit of kicking going on at the end. There was a lot of niggle between the teams. Yeah, that only really started when the benches started to come on. It all got a bit silly. You're not allowed to punch people in rugby anymore, which is unfortunate because it would put manners on both sides. There was a lot of silliness going on. Um... But I'm glad to see some of the Connacht players running 40 metres a couple of times to look after their mate. Mm. I won't name any names, but they uh, they did. It all just got... They, I think, look, they keep going. But when you've won two games in three seasons, it's I, I don't know how you keep going, actually. Mm. And they are a better outfit at home. Yes. But that was what Connacht needed, was five points, a high score, and then... Yeah, they'll examine that on Monday and then they'll move very quickly on to the Dragons who got thumped by Benetton today. Um, but we've had some other crazy results. Uh, you've got to take your hat off to Munster to be the first European side to go to Loftus and win with a bonus point. Uh, that takes some doing. It's a difficult place to go. And then the Ospreys from nowhere. Toby Booth is a very, very good manager coach mm. he talks a good game he's very resilient and he also is very honest but his boys tonight turning going down to the stormers mm -hmm. and coming away with a bonus point win the urc must be ecstatic yep. this is what they want they want lots of teams chasing with four games to go uh it's and then the and leinster getting hammered by the lions yeah with the side they had out i'm not Entirely there was a lot of decent players. That wasn't the side that they sent out last year or the no, year before. No, it wasn't, um, which shows that the Lions, they're a hard read. They, mm. they beat us comfortably here. Then they went to Ospreys, Ospreys and didn't mm -hmm. uh, do anything. And then they didn't do anything in Europe. But now that they've got back home again, the more teams that are involved, the merrier. Um, 
but I, <laughs> the problem for Connacht is that you know points were left behind earlier in the season. Yeah, but all, all teams can say that. All teams can look at results going, we should have won here, we should have won there. You, you, you can't, Alan, when you've lost. You yeah, the problem is you leave the points behind on the last play of the game three times this season. And that's, that's where it could come up. And we knew when it happened... Uh, because it's going to be very tight now. Uh, they're going to have to win next week with five points. They're going to have to try to get something out of Munster. And then the Stormers coming here, who, who don't travel brilliantly. Mm. You would wonder a little bit where they are. Um, but that was a shock for them today. And they'll either react well to it or they won't. I'm not sure who they're playing next week. We'll find that out in a second. Danny, you want to jump in there? Yeah, it was something we spoke about um, on the midweek was about identity, that we didn't really see it. I felt like that was more like the connect of the last few years. Um, just wanted to make that point. Yeah, yeah, it did look more like a connect team who wanted to run the ball and wanted to accept it was at one point. Um, the lads were rushing off tonight, so we did. We had quite a short post-match press conference because uh, Finley's obviously celebrating his 200th, which we'll, we'll mention now in a second. Um, but it was something we need to ta ask. When... There was three yellow cards tonight. I didn't realise it was three yellow cards. Their first yellow card, um, Connacht went into their shell when it looked as though... And it was the centre who'd gone off. Yet prior to that, Connacht had been playing a wide open brand of rugby. They get, up, they get playing against 14 men, close down, start playing a short game. And the first thing they do after the player comes back in the field is run the ball. They're going, hang on a minute, what, what is it that Connacht are doing or not doing? Actually, it's slightly wrong. The last thing they did before he came on the pitch was Matty Devine scored the first try. Yeah, but that, yeah, he. <laughs> but I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah, there just seems to be an issue with us against 14 players. I don't know what it is. We do go into a shot. We become very predictable, very conservative. Self conscious. Self -conscious. Possibly, possibly. I don't know. I, I don't know. There's a worry. It, it was like that in the first half, but in the second half, when they got the, that second yellow, they didn't do that. They, they did the right thing. They, they attacked it more. The game they, was over at that stage. But they had the confidence. Hmm. What do you reckon, William? I, I don't think you take much out of this game. I think they're no, so... No, I, I'm, I'm so talking about the specifics of a yellow card and every game that we've played this year where we've gone against 14 men, we've struggled. And it started again tonight. I didn't see that, to be honest with you. I, I just knew they were going to win. They knew they were going to win. Mm. And you just get the job done. There was never a question mark. That game was always going to be... Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not denying that. I'm so, just, so I'm I, just... I, I don't think you worry too much when they're down to 14 men, to be honest with you. You just keep playing the way you've been playing and you get the job done mm -hmm. and you examine it for a brief time on Monday and then you move on. Um, it's interesting just looking at next week. Uh, Munster go to the Lions mm -hmm. and Leinster go to the Stormers. Yeah. And that's <laughs> going to be really... A, that's a high, high-pressure game for... Uh, and of course, Glasgow get to play Zebra away, and then get to play them two weeks later. But anyway, that's our three weeks later. Yes, but you do say they do have to go down to the high belt and play two games at the high belt. Yeah, that's odd. I don't know how that's happened. That was supposed not to happen. Mm. But the Stormers, that's a high pressure game for them. I know Leinster were beaten today, but they've they've really got that wrong, and that's that's going to be fascinating. And that's as I said, that's what URC want. They want these games to mean something, yep. and. It's a good competition now. It's, things are levelling out a bit. If you have 11 teams still chasing eight places, maybe not quite that many because some are probably safe, but you will finish up with a situation where uh, you're going to have high-pressure games when you get to round 17 and 18. Yeah, yeah. Lindy, your thoughts? Because it is, it's, it's becoming very compressed, the league. The, or the, the log. When, when did the log become a thing? It's a table, not a log, but anyway. Who calls it that? Pete! Log table. Oh, OK, the log table, yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. Something you had ever heard of before? Oh, I don't think it really matters, does it? Oh, can, I, can I just say there's one other wonderful thing, that when you click on that ridiculous Shields thing in the URC, you get nothing. The page has died, I think. No, no, they brought it back. There's now... No, but there's no Shields come up when the, you click on Shields. No, no, it, it, it came up yesterday. The first time I tried it, it came up yesterday. And what they've done now is the Shield only matters for the games between the teams, teams in your own group. So it becomes an Interpro. Mm -hmm. It's an actually Interpro table. Mm -hmm. Yes. And currently, Munster are last. Munster are last. Well, it doesn't work on my system. Munster uh, are last by eight points. Yes, exactly. It's bananas. <laughs> but Lindy, you're studying the table there. It's fascinating, isn't it? 
yeah, it's a really interesting table, and it's interesting for a number of reasons. We still have Leinster out in front, but isn't it interesting that uh, Glasgow Warriors are, mm-hmm. are definitely giving them a put in a little bit of pressure? And I think it's about time that they were put under pressure because they've been leading for so long. Yeah. Um, it's it's good for the competition to see that. Um, if you, it, it's it, it's a very tight table, isn't it, for the mm. first time in a long time? I think if you think that there's how many one two three four teams. All on 39, including Connacht. So one there's... One 40. Yeah. One on 42. Like that's so it's, one it, result. It, it, it is an incredibly close for... I'd say I, I can't remember too many... No. You know, you or see, you know, that it has been so close in the end. The good thing is that, for us, is that it is so close. I suppose the bad thing is, is that we've got a couple of very tough matches coming up. We do. We but... Do. The whole point about that is it's still in Connett's own hands. Yes. If they, if they keep winning, then they will make the top eight. And if they don't, then they won't. Um, so at least they're not trying to make up, trying yeah. to make up like five, ten or, you know, 15 points. They're not. They're, no. actually, they're actually in it. And, you know, even sometimes you don't, the way results go, you know, even a bonus point might just be enough to turn it, if, you know, at the end of the day. So you yeah. just don't know. It's all well, for We want Lancer to do it. We want Lancer to do it. And it's very exciting it is. at this stage of the season to be fighting, you know, on this front to get into Champions Cup rugby or get into the top eight. And, you know, it's exciting for everybody here in Connacht. And it was exciting for those people out there. There was the, the excitement for Bundy. It took us a long time. You had to come in the back door today, <laughs> Lily, because you couldn't get in the front door. I took five minutes to get out of the, the clan stand. And at one stage, I was standing there. There was a wave of people started coming in the clan. I was going, what's going on? Bundy was walking down the track signing autographs, and people were just... It was incredible. It was like the Pied Piper. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely. And Finlay was down there and a lot of other players. And, yeah, it was a good atmosphere. Um, and that's important to generate that. And the last game is coming up here very soon against the the Stormers. The last game, as in this version of this ground, uh, it'll never be the same again. It'll be completely different, uh, and that's fascinating. Next season's going to be a bit of a challenge for everybody. I think when we're all crushed over on the other side, or maybe some of us aren't getting in at all. But um, yeah, it's set up now. The next Saturday is a big game. That'll be a tough, dour old game over there. Um, yeah, we struggle over there all the time. A lot of people struggle there, but you've still got to beat them. Um, they're not... I don't think they're playing as, as well as they can do over the years. They are, you know, they've got problems. Players have left. There's money issues. That's the whole story of Welsh rugby. The Ospreys, and to a certain extent Cardiff last night, no, they... <laughs> robbed, robbed. They, they, they were, essentially... Uh, but you know, I think probably looking back at it, the referee probably got it right. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but mm, but it is, it is fascinating. And then the trip to Munster, yep. that's a huge game, big game for both sides. But the pressure comes off when you beat the Bulls in Loftus. I'll tell you, that will cause palpitations yep. down in Pretoria because they just assume that only a South African side can beat them there, and they don't lose even to them very often, but a bonus point win by a European side. <laughs> Great. I can't imagine how many videos have already gone up on social media explaining fraud by South African fans, explaining why they were robbed by the referee, all of which will point out why the referee got it right. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Well, one thing Connacht got right tonight, I have to say, and we're going to finish, I'm going to leave the podcast finished with this, the crowd singing the fields of Athenry in the clan stand. It was excellent from the clan stand. I don't know what it sounded like from everyone else. It sounded else. brilliant. Well, up sitting above the clan stand in the media box. And they were well up for it. And that actually, yeah, something like that got the fans revved up and they stayed revved up. They certainly did. So we we'll finished the night with the clan singing The Fields.
break out or nothing changes sad and confused don't wait until 